in El Salvador um, law, my comments on that is that I don't see that Bitcoin needs a government to make the citizens use uh, something like it is, like Bitcoin. Well, that is a kind of open network to opt out of the system that makes you use uh, some kind of money because you could, you could go to the jail if you don't use it, like dollars or colons or bolivars or every all the legal tenders and uh, fiat currency around the world. That's my my first idea that that I even share it uh, in that Twitter spaces from Nick Carter that we had uh, the president Bukele joining it. I I say that I see that the main uh, beneficiary of this law, at least in this first moment, is the state. They have uh, a momentum uh, around the Bitcoin community, uh, around the world, as as it if it is a really uh, deep innovation on how politics work and stuff like that. But if you listen to Salvadorans outside El Sonte that have been the key example on how Bitcoin could solve pro problems to Salvadorans. Uh, if you look the reaction outside that, you see that many people are not really familiar with what Bitcoin is or not even with uh, uh, Lightning that will leave you with get Give you give you the opportunity to use Bitcoin instantly uh, with cheap uh, fees. Many of the people in El Salvador really don't know about these things, and this knowledge is really useful to uh, deploy in the same time where we have the law deploying in the country. Like it will be. Uh, the, the law will start to be uh, mandatory since September, but we have this time, this these few months, to like help people understand how it could be useful to them. And uh, you have different little groups of Salvadorans that really hate Bukele administration, so they will hate any idea that the Bukele administration pushes. So Bitcoin is kind of a scapegoat in this in this context. Like they are against Bitcoin, not because Bitcoin itself, but because it's Bukele who is pushing it. So if you see this thing from the outside, it is net positive for Bitcoin. It is making Bitcoin to get to a state level topic on the conversation, on the politics. <laughs> so that's if you see this only from a Bitcoiner perspective, from a Bitcoin related perspective. But if you see this as, a, as the people that will have to face this law and in the context of a country like El Salvador that have a really sad history about uh, guerrillas, militarization, something like that. And as you see that they are facing a kind of new autocratic movement around the institutions and that you see that the democracy maybe is in danger because Bukele have a really huge amount of popular support and that reminds me a lot of Chavez. So if you see this from the context of Salvadorans, it is really normal to have fear. I even understand that they they could be against this, but I'm, I'm fine really, uh, I don't know, like, it's crazy to me, like half citizens from any country protesting against Bitcoin. That is a tool that would leave you, uh, would let you to have more power against the state. So there are really 
are, are really different uh, things happening in the same uh, news, in the same application of the law. And uh, I think that El Salvador could be uh, an example to the region, maybe not only Central America, but Central America, but all all the region, Latin and South America too. And uh, I see that there are politicians that are trying to make this uh, momentum that is happening around Bitcoin and the Spanish speaker community and the uh, Latin America uh, region, trying to have their own uh, momentum <laughs> and they are using laser eyes and stuff like that and if you see the the example in Paraguay they made a shitcoin law no not a bitcoin law and, and a shitcoin law where uh, the state will be will have more power over the regulation on how Bitcoin could be mined, on how they could use any different uh, option to pay things. They, they are trying to uh, give more power to the state in in a sphere of things. I, I think Bitcoin and crypto, like it is a different sphere of things against the state where the individual could be more powerful in some situations. So it is really different the approach that is happening in Paraguay or the proposal that we had in Argentina, even where when I have uh, Franco Amati, that is a known Argentinian Bitcoiner, saying to me that the proposal is was righted by the clown, like the politician that made that proposal is, is just from the show and stuff like that the the approach to to the proposal is really different too against the what is happening in El Salvador or even in Paraguay where they make uh, special emphasis in how they could use the electricity that they produce to mine bitcoin and how that uh, bitcoin mining operation could be a kind of new industry in the country so you you see different approaches uh, the the more bitcoin uh, related one should be for sure in el salvador making bitcoin legal tender uh, making it uh, free of tax uh, uh, capital gains so you have this uh, like the effect, the El Salvador effect happening in different countries in the region, but they are um, making their own uh, proposals, trying to fit this uh, Bitcoin thing in their own realities. So I don't see that it will be a, an homogeneous uh, movement around Bitcoin adoption. I hope that... Uh, the main countries that will try to regulate or will create uh, some laws around Bitcoin uh, try to use the same model as we are seeing in El Salvador, but with their with their own context and working with their own countries. Because if you make Bitcoin legal tender in a country, you will have uh, are a, a more easy adoption in a medium of exchange narrative but if you uh, make that law uh, I, I don't know like if you create the, uh, the reglamentation over that law to make Bitcoin part of the financial system of your country it it start to add new complexities and new potential benefits to the citizens that could use Bitcoin. Uh, you can use Bitcoin wherever, if, even if you don't have any law, but you will be safer. And if you are a newcomer, you will probably feel safer than as we, we commented uh, before, like many of us uh, have doubts around how Bitcoin could be useful to us, but 
it was a matter of time to understand how it could be. But if your country is saying like, well, we understand the risk around Bitcoin and we find that it could be useful to do this kind of financial services, there will be, uh, I don't know, like more le legitimacy from some kind of investor profiles, uh, some kind of users of Bitcoin, even the poor of the poorest will find that it could be interesting to, to see if they can have a little amount of Bitcoin. So in general, to me, El Salvador news is from a Bitcoin perspective, really cool. We are uh, going through the state level, but as a citizen of this region and understanding the problems that the Salvadorians would face, I understand that they have doubts, that there are people that are not really happy to have this. I, I hope that they could uh, they could avoid the, to politize the, the topic. Like, I'm not a Bukele agent. I don't like uh, <laughs> to be called names just because I'm trying to figure it out how to help uh, Bitcoiners in El Salvador or people that are interested in Bitcoin <laughs> in El Salvador, but I'm seeing that many of the critics of the of the topic are just criticizing it because uh, it is a Bukele proposal, not because it is a a Bitcoin thing related. And yes, I think that that's the the panorama. 